this vendors and uh, agencies from China. They are working on some activities related to watch standard. This uh, uh, well page is for our OGC China Forum. The OGC China Forum was established on 2017, and these are list of members. So next, uh, I will give my uh, presentation uh, around these five parts. The first part is about the big data infrastructure for joint service. And then how we can use engineering data for better GI service. Then followed by several cases and uh, the platform designed to support this uh, better infrastructure for GI service and engineering. And then conclusion. Uh, we can say that the, uh, there are three peaks of GIS, the GI system, GI size, and GI service. As traditionally, we focus more on the software system, and then we have scientific analytic methods in GIS. Now we have more wide application. We need to provide better service for application. So the definition of service from the ISO perspective is about the distinct part of functionality. Uh, which by entity through interface. The web service uh, can be defined as a software system to support the interoperable machine-to-machine -machine interaction of a network. So what is about a GI service in this content? We are talking about the functional software entity with the interface that can provide your special data information and knowledge across the web. So traditionally, when we talk about GI service, the interface and the interoperability are important. For example, in OGC, we have various types of service. We all know catalog service, feature service, map service. So traditionally, when we develop special data infrastructure, we use these various service. We coordinate them through the publish, find, find, discover paradigm. So based on this variable service, create the special data infrastructure. So in the big data context, we are moving focus with from the SDI established above service from big data infrastructure behind the so for we need the data infrastructure. For various data model, the key value. No circle graph based data model, the distributed data storage, no circle solution, new circle solution. We also have computing infrastructure. The map reduce the traditional MOPI for parallel computing, the OpenMOP GPU, string processing, the various computing infrastructure. Also, the modeling infrastructure. We have the modeling, open modeling interface. We have all science modeling framework. We have the model web concept component-based uh, modeling framework. So these various infrastructure are used in big data infrastructure. Now in the big data context, we need an infrastructure dealing with the data life cycle from data planning, collection, integration to long-term preservation, publication and sharing provenance. For big data analysis, we also need new infrastructure, which can integrate different parallel processing architecture together, like MapReduce based Hadoop, Spark, the traditional thread based, uh, message based, process based, OpenMOP, Python thread. We need to develop the geospatial specific parallel model. We also need to define the different parallel interface, the C++, Java, Python. Then based on various processing models, we develop a parallel geocomputation algorithm library. Then we can use a GI script to glue these various algorithm processing library together. For a model web, we also need an infrastructure because traditionally, we are focusing on the analysis, uh, special analysis function, like the buffer overlay, this traditional geoprocessing function. But in the environment modeling domain, the model, the special temporal model, based on, for example, they often are executed based on time step. So it's a long-term 
bidirectional interaction process. We need to move the integrated environmental modeling framework to the web environment to support the model sharing and the interaction on the web. So together, we need a hybrid infrastructure from big data infrastructure behind the service to the special data infrastructure in front of the service. We combine them together. So this graph shows three dimensions. The first dimension is about the traditional GIS dimension, the data collection management analysis display. The second dimension is about the service dimension, service pub publish, discovery, SP chain, and then the intelligent system dimension, how we perceive, reason, learn, act. We combine this dimension together to support an intelligent GI service. Now we can talk about the GIS engineering. In the big data content, we can have a little bit more engineering for GIS. So for GIS. GIS engineering, we can say it combines GIS system perspective, GIS science, GIS service. So in 2016, in China, proposed to prepare GIS engineering as a bachelor degree program, and it is approved by the Department of Education. This is due to the increasing market for GIS engineering in many engineering projects. So we can say, because GIS software and technology have become mature, now engineering is more important compared to, the, to its development decades ago. So traditional GIS engineering is kind of software engineering activity. And I think every student in, in the school, they learn how to create a GIS project. After they graduate in the market, they also develop hundreds of thousands of GIS projects. So engineering, we can say it's another kind of big data. So here in the big data perspective, the new questions arise. Can we get the GIS engineering data? How much is reviewed from past GIS projects? The data? algorithm, workflow, GUI infrastructure. How can we expedite development of GIS project? The past cost schedule, how we can use GeoAI to improve GIS engineering? And some new, new questions, the concept drift, the metamorphic testing, How, how can we recommend best practice? Sometimes we see lots of algorithms are published, but only some of them are workable in, in practice. A lot of questions involved for the engineering data. So here in this topic, we are primarily focused on two bullets. First, we need to have an infrastructure that can make big GIS engineering data sensible and accessible. But this infrastructure for GIS engineering is not an easy job. We can say a little engineering data may go a long way. Let's take a look at several cases. For example, we take a natural disaster. We know natural disasters are complex, involve complex process mechanism, while coverage often involve large amount of secondary disaster. They also require real-time response for disaster monitoring and so here shows the life cycle of the natural disaster risk management from the risk prevention, mitigation, preparedness risk transfer, response, resilient recovery. So 
during this life cycle, there are various models involved in risk management. Let's take a look at one belt, one road disaster. According to the International Disaster Database, 4,000 large disasters occurred from 1980 to 2050. So floods, storms, earthquakes have 12 members. That means you have lots of projects developed, for example, for flood analysis, for storm, for earthquake. Can we reduce some of past successful experience? Here we can show various processing flows are involved in the past project. For example, a workflow for change detection of water coverage error from remote sensing imagery. The turbidity extraction from remote sensing imagery. A workflow for heavy detection from remote sensing imagery. The watershed runoff simulation workflow. The urban water logging from DM and vector data. So we can see there are various of processing workflow that can be developed in the past project. So for this infrastructure for engineering data, what are basic elements in this infrastructure? We propose there are three basic stores, the data store, the model store, and then the APP store. Based on these three elements, we can, this is an architecture. We can, at the bottom part, we can use a cloud or non-cloud environment. In the data store, we are focusing on various data management measures. And the model store, various processing algorithm model can be involved in this store. And then based on data store and model store, we can have a standard service API. On the left part, we develop the APP store. We can use, we have, have a APP classification, the APP map context template, the business flow template, the GUI template. All this can be reduced from past engineering projects. So in the data store of this infrastructure platform, we have the met, it's metadata based of warehouse management. Data source using distributed node. You have tag based topic management, the search function, browse function, and many various data source plugins. So we can use a distributed file system, distributed database technology to support the data storage. And then it provides the image DB API, tile DB API, vector DB API, and chart DB API. For data publication from data collected from institute sensors. We can upload data to the network disk, go through the ETL transformation, classification, annotation, and then publish them by the web service. The model store, they are actually library of algorithm models towards workflow. And they are high performance implementation in computational infrastructure. So for the high performance computation, we can provide the Spark processing for vector data. How vector data are stored in HDFS, HBase, using the distributed spatial index. How vector data object can be mapped to the spatial RDD, the spatial object in the Spark RDD. And then traditional GIS software or kernels can be migrated to the spatial RDD. For raster data, we can also develop image RDD in Spark. This can be divided into two approaches. One is about the single image. The other one is about a large set of small satellite image. So we have heard the first topic, the uh, first presentation talk about the geo AI. Usually when we talk about the geo AI, most people focusing on 
how AR technology can change like the moving uh, moving feature robot. And the GIS, how the machine learning or other AI technology can improve the geospatial analytics or image analysis. But in the infrastructure, in the, for example, in traditional GIS software, how we can use AI to change the traditional GIS software kernel. For example, we already have a computing infrastructure to support the kernel algorithm, like a buffer, like an overlay. But when we introduce machine learning into this computing infrastructure, we can use them to help us to develop the AI optimization for geoprocessing, like use machine learning to predict the computational intensity. So based on, so this is talking about the engineering data, the computational data collected in the computational infrastructure. We use the past computational data to help us for better load balance. Then string computing, when sensor observation are connected to the GIS software, you need to provide a new data model. For example, we can develop the observation RDD aligned with the spark streaming processing to support the real-time observation processing. Then, traditionally we have already have a set of processing library. How this tradition, legacy processing library can be wrapped into this infrastructure platform. Then we can use develop the Java wrapper interface. And these models, we can base on task-based algorithm, the task-based parallel mode. And uh, access this processing library using WTS interface. So this data and models in the infrastructure, we can access them through inter uh, service interface, the data interface, processing interface, model interface. Then we can design a workflow engine to integrate data and process service. So let, 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 let's take a look at the APP store. It's actually managing a set of GIS projects. That's it provide a project infrastructure, making engineering data sensible, accessible, reusing template to expedite project development. This platform shows show this infrastructure. It has the platform status, the infrastructure status, the menu, uh, each project, like the earthquake, like the flood analysis. And then based on the past project, we can quickly develop the new project. If we click each project, then we can enter into a particular project space. For example, this is about earthquake interface. On, in, at the back end of this interface, we can access various disaster analysis data uh, analysis function and also disaster data. And for flood analysis, we can also develop the workflow. So the first hour, what we should do? The second hour, what we should do? And at each stage, the response, the responsible party, the task status. And then we move this design the infrastructure to support the provincial disaster decision support. It may support the Hainan Provenance Remote Sensing Disaster Decision Support System. Then, you know, Hainan Provenance it also was affected by typhoon. So here, this is a typhoon the trajectory. Then we can based on this trajectory, we can do the analysis using algorithm available in this background infrastructure. And this is the flood analysis. The flood area in, uh, in this area. And then how many villages or people were affected by this event? 
Then similarly, they can also use this infrastructure to support smart city. This also shows a similar infrastructure design for to support the various smart city projects. And we can see the left part. The bottom left part is a list of smart city projects we developed and deployed in this platform. The, here are several snapshots of the platform operation. How we publish data, how we publish algorithm. Then if we click each project, we can do a particular project analysis. For example, real estate community accommodation suitability. We can do analysis of each community and to show the index of this, uh, is this suitable for human to, to buy or convenient to transportation to hospital? So we can do the index analysis. We can also develop the urban traffic analysis project in this uh, infrastructure. So this, because we share the GUI template, we share the algorithm, this is infrastructure. Actually, this infrastructure is a life, is a provider this eco, ecosystem. So people can develop various projects. This do the urban traffic analysis. We can also support the smart cell. So people, this project, we use this infrastructure. Then people need to know. The application demand need to know. Where are the salesmen? Where are the store? Where are the products? And how we can get a profit by optimizing their daily visit to store? So all these analysis function data, we create a space in this infrastructure. So if we make this project mature, applicable as a best practice, then we can easily develop other kind of project. Here show, just shows some in the place. So here are the conclusion. So GIS engineering data is a kind of geospatial data which can be sensed and accessed in big data infrastructure. So data model APP are three calls in big data enabled GIS engineering and service. If we have better big data infrastructure for engineering data, for computational data, then we can have better GIS engineering and service. 